Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabatu fillah Da'wa ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we've said uh, countless times, many times is something reserved for people of ilm. And what I mean by people of ilm, I mean that you must have knowledge of what you're calling to. The knowledge of Islam. If you're just calling just to Tawheed, then you must be grounded in Tawheed. You must be able to articulate that knowledge. And you must have some knowledge of those people you are calling to. And knowledge of what you're calling to. And how to call to it properly. At least basic knowledge. And this is why Ahl Sunnah, one of the biggest reasons or criticisms of Ahl Sunnah against groups like Jama'at Tabliq. Because uh, uh, Jamaat Tabliq, they may have a noble goal. And they may, as a part of their movement, one of the pillars of their movement is that you have sincerity, ikhlas. And they claim to call to an aspect of Tawheed, Rububiyyah, the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But however, in general, you'll find amongst their jama'at very few people who have knowledge. And they encourage people to go out and go forth and stand up and give bayan without knowledge. These are huge mistakes in manhaj, in methodology, in methodology of how to articulate the dawah. That that is not the correct way of giving da'wah because the Prophet والسلام, mentioned countless ahadith about the importance of knowledge and that knowledge is to be obtained from Ahl al -ilm. and that it is such a important path however you'll find from those jama'at like jama'at al tabliq that they don't encourage necessarily seeking the knowledge, but they encourage you to be a part of their movement, to go for 40 days, to go to India or Pakistan and go to the their ijtima, their, 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 their gatherings and their big conferences all around the world. And they are one of the biggest Muslim jamaats in the world. Them and Akhwan Muslimin, they make up the vast majority of Muslims. And it's a dangerous minhaj. Because the Prophet والسلام, said, Man bi khayran Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them knowledge of the, of the deen. Those people who don't have knowledge of the deen, this is not a sign that Allah loves them. So this is why you don't have the new Muslim out in the forefront giving da'wah, calling people to that which they don't know themselves. They can't call to that which they have no knowledge about. And I've seen some of the most, some of the worst mistakes by some of those individuals, new Muslim, pushing the new Muslim in the forefront. My dear respected brothers, uh, da 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 da. And the man is making horrible mistakes even around Tawheed due to nervousness, lack of experience, and lack of ilm. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim man and Muslim woman. That means you have to have knowledge of the basics. You have to have knowledge of what you need to practice and what you need to understand of Aqidah and Creed. You have to have knowledge of Tawheed. And so this brings up the statement of a great Imam who said, He said, I'lam, meaning uh, no to get, grab your attention. Rahimukullah, may Allah have mercy upon you. It's an obligation for us to know four things. Al-ula al-ilm. And the first thing is knowledge. 
The first thing is knowledge. And then he defined what knowledge is, as Ibn al-Qayyim said, and, and before him, knowledge, al-ilm, huwa qala Allah wa qala Rasul. The, the knowledge is the statement of Allah and the statement of his messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's what ilm is. It isn't our desires. It isn't just feeling good and, and, and speaking about any topic and finance and what have you. No. But the asal of knowledge doesn't mean we don't speak about other things, of course. But the asal of knowledge, al-ilm al-nafiya, is knowledge of the kitab and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Imam said, It's an obligation upon us to study four things. He said, al-ula al-ilm, the first thing is knowledge. So that knowledge, the Imam explained what knowledge is. It is knowing Allah and it is knowing his messenger and it is knowing the religion of Islam with his textual proofs. And the reason being, and where did he get this from? From the hadith, which explains the questions, the questioning of the grave, where the angels will come to you. Everyone, will, the angels will come to you in the grave and they'll question you. Men Rabbak, who's your Lord? Madinak, what is your religion? What is your deen? What did you practice? Men, men Nabiak or Ma Nabiak, and who was your prophet? And the mu'min will be able to answer those questions satisfactorily. And the disbeliever will not be able to answer those questions. And will receive torment in the grave. And may Allah protect us and our families from that. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. So habatifillah, that's why it's, it's knowledge. It's having knowledge. And giving da'wah without knowledge can be criminal because then the person can actually cause more harm than good. That doesn't mean that if you know something about some little basic knowledge about Tawheed that you don't speak about it. No, that's not what we're saying. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Balagha anni wa aya. Narrate upon me even if it is a verse. However, it means that you should not make that your main Wadifa, your main job and your main and going out to give dawah without knowledge. You have to have knowledge. You have to have ilm. Because the one who does not have knowledge and they give dawah often yufsid akthar min ma yuslah that they cause more wickedness than the good that they bring. And let's just look at an example. We have examples here in my city. A new Dawa movement, and I won't name it, but from what I've heard already, they want to do a noble goal. They're going out and going out to some of the places in the marketplaces to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is beautiful. The problem is that they just include all of those youth that have zeal to do so. But those youth, if they don't have any training, any knowledge, then they can find themselves causing more harm than good. And even some of the sisters, they just wear a khiman, which has become very commonplace here. They wear the, uh, like a, a scarf, not even a khimar. It doesn't even hold, cover their neck. Many of them, they wear a little scarf. So what I'm doing with this hat on my head is almost equivalent to what they're doing because they're covering their hair. As a matter of fact, it's equivalent. Their neck is open and they wear jeans. So they're wearing as much as hijab as I'm wearing. Wallahum sta'an. And this is very common. I see it all the time. I've noticed it since I've been back. A lot of our sisters, may Allah guide us in them and correct us and correct them. They don't cover properly. So how is it? What kind of knowledge and what kind of dawah are you giving wearing jeans and a kufi? Or jeans and a, a little simple scarf. What are you calling the people to? Because you're not giving them any example for practice. It's as if it's like the man who goes into the nightclub and he's holding a bottle of the, the whiskey, smoking a cigarette in the in the other hand, high on weed, trying to talk about tawheed to the bartender 
who's wearing a mini skirt. Is this an example? They're going to look at you and say, well, what are you calling to that distinguishes from my lifestyle? Because why should I listen to you? The point being, getting back to the topic at hand, is that we need knowledge. We need knowledge before we call to Allah. And may Allah bless us all with a khlas, with the bat, and ilm and nafi, and ruskin taybu, wa amal al-muttaqabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.